Hey everybody, my name is Ryan Swanson and welcome to Funalysis. Today we're going to be reviewing a few different matches, three of them to be precise, talking about how lower seated alliances can outperform expectations. So we'll be reviewing alliances, for the number eight alliance from Bonnie Lake, the number seven alliance from the Great Northern Regional, and the number five alliance from the Sacramento Regional. Now none of these alliances took home a blue banner, but all of them got close and all of them performed uh, uh, outperformed expectations, utilizing a strategy that I think will become more common as we get into the season. So, welcome to Funalysis and uh, looking forward to getting into this topic. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Oshcut is a premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, guaranteed lead times, and instant online quotes. Oshcut is offering first teams 50% off any future order up to $200 when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OSHCUT. Just upload a 3D model or plot pattern to get started. All right, starting things off, we'll be reviewing the Bonnie Lake event, and that will consist of teams uh, 5937, 9036, and 4911 on the Blue Alliance. Now you'll see Alliance 8, and you'll see Finals 2. That's the only time you'll see that the entire... Uh, season so far in Reefscape, we have not yet seen the number eight alliance make it to the big event. So what we'll be showing you here is uh, to start things off in autonomous, you see the relatively mundane autonomous mode by blue. Uh, you can see they're behind the autonomous mode that uh, the top seated red alliance is running. But at the end of the day, we've got two coral placed, we've got an algae grabbed, um, but what I really want to point out is not so much their autonomous mode. Let's talk about Teleop. So we're going to see 5937 running algae. We're going to see 9036 and, 59, or, and uh, 4911 both running coral cycles. Now PNW, um, their, their camera angles flip around, so we'll, we'll get to watch a little bit of the number one alliance doing their thing. But when we get back to it, what I want to point out is... The number one alliance running two plus one, very common strategy, especially for the number one seed. The number eight alliance, triple offense. Now, what I think makes triple offense really effective here is 5937. They're the key, running algae, staying out of the way. Uh, so effectively, it's two plus one versus uh, triple offense. And that'll be a common theme between the three events we're going to be discussing, or the three alliances we'll be discussing. One thing I want to point out is at Bonnie Lake, number eight alliance, they're comprised of the number 10, number 14, and number 16 OPR teams at the event, which is more or less in line with what you'd expect from a, a number eight alliance. It's well constructed. So another, another note for this alliance, their combined OPR is 100.54. Their combined EPA is 112.3. And we're watching this match right now, and we're seeing 103 points. We've got 48 seconds left. Um, they're putting up numbers that are beyond what their, you know, their implied numbers would be based on both EPA and OPR. Now, if we do the math, we look at, you know, the results that they had in playoffs. They had an average total playoff score of 138.9 points, so significantly higher than their total EPA or OPR would suggest. Now, I would posit that the reason for that is because triple offense, especially with three well-coordinated alliance partners, will make it so that the robots are greater, or the alliance is greater than the sum of their parts. Now, we're watching time ticking down toward the end game. The Blue Alliance successfully... Uh, managed to keep it close against a high-powered alliance featuring uh, two teams in particular that have been on the FRC Top 25 in 1778 and 2046. Two very, very competitive teams. So what I'd like to point out there uh, is that they scored 24 Coral. 
Now, granted, the the number one alliance scored 37, but 24 Coral was better than any other alliance at the Bonnie Lake event. They were able to do that with triple offense. So from there, we're going to review the number seven alliance at the Great Northern Regional. Now, similar kind of train of thought, we're going to start out in the autonomous mode. Uh, this is the number seven versus number two alliance matchup. Uh, 7v2, number 7 is comprised of 3293, 7257, and then low robot specialist 9092, who you'll see right now is performing a, a three-piece L1 auto. That might be the only three-piece L1 that I've seen. Uh, they were by far the best L1 robot at the event. Uh, as we get into Teleop now, 3293 is going to serve as the algae uh, coral specialists. They'll start off the match doing a couple algae. Uh, 7257, they're cycling coral. 9092, they're going to fill up L1. So again, a triple offense alliance, and this time they're not actually being defended. So uh, the alliance number two is also running triple offense. Now, as we continue watching, we see... Um, 3293 is switched into coral cycling. They do a little bit of a hybrid here where um, they're not just doing algae like a lot of triple triple offense alliances have been doing. They do a combination of algae and coral. So all three robots cycling to the reef. Now again, I want to point out the OPR ranks are number five overall for 3293, number eight overall for 9092, and number 27 overall for 7257. Again, it's it's an alliance that's constructed with uh, robots with an OPR that you would expect to kind of have available to that number seven alliance. So it, nothing nothing special, nothing fantastic. I'd also like to point out the double. Uh, double Coral scored here, kind of interesting. Uh, unfortunate for the Blue Alliance, missed out on a couple points. But as we get into the end game, we'll find that uh, ultimately doesn't hurt them. So again, let's go through the data for this line. So their combined OPR is 124.55. Combined EPA is 125, or sorry, 125.3. And their average playoff score, and you'll see it in this event too, uh, in this match, their average playoff score is 157. So again, an example of an alliance that's greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, in part, that's going to be because you've got three good robots playing together. Uh, but I think the largest contributing factor is going to be that triple offense, uh, enabling that alliance to be greater than the sum of its parts. Another really great factor for this alliance you can see is their triple climb. So every match they're ending with 36 points. Uh, and that was huge. As we come to the, the end of match three, you can see that the Blue Alliance pulled off the upset over the number two seed, 161 to 160. Very close match. It, it came down to the barge climb at the end. Uh, triple climb really helped that alliance. But again, triple offense enabling upsets in Reefscape, something that we haven't had a lot of. The number one alliance has been very, very dominant. And it's in, lar in large part because I think a lot of teams are trying to play defense. The final alliance that we're going to be reviewing here is number five alliance from Sacramento. This event got a ton of play, a, t a ton of watch. Uh, obviously, anytime you've got 254 and Citrus teaming up, you're going to have high levels of play. We're going to be reviewing match number seven here. And this is not your typical five alliance. As we're seeing, you've got uh, 45-22 and I believe it's 16-71, uh, both running multi-piece autos. And then you've got 2204 contributing their one-piece auto as well. In this case, 45-22 is going to be running the algae specialist role, while the other two team alliance partners are running coral. So again, this is probably your most common triple offense go-to go to approach for alliances. Now, Alliance 5 is up against a difficult challenge. Citrus and, and uh, Poofs have won 10 regionals together. Uh, they're really, really good, uh, especially <laughs> together. It's They're fun to watch. But this high-powered number 5 alliance is comprised of the number 3 OPR team at the event, 45-22, number 11 OPR team at the event, 1671, and the number 19 OPR team at the event, uh, number 2204. So... You've got maybe a little bit overperforming or overachieving uh, members of Alliance 5. 
Um, their combined OPR is 125.21. Combined EPA was a little bit higher, 145.6. But when you look at their average playoff score, and you'll see a big number here in match number seven, they averaged 183.6 points uh, throughout the playoffs. So, And then in particular in this match, you're going to see them push the number one alliance uh, to the brink, really. So uh, Alliance 5, Rapid Cycling, 45-22 is switched over to doing some Coral. They're, uh, they're doing algae opportunistically, and they're, they're mixing in Coral cycles. That's what makes them the third best robot at this event by OPR. Uh, Hyper-effective cycling, and really a, any playoff alliance is you know, predicated or built around having that elite robot that's able to do everything, like 45-22. Um, but their alliance partners, 1671, 2204, efficient, effective coral cycling. Really, it's a testament to really great alliance selection, great drafting by this alliance. Um, and you can see they're only 13 points down with 13 seconds remaining. They're going in for climbs. I believe that's where uh, things slightly fall apart for the Blue Alliance. Red Alliance has just got a little bit of an edge, but ultimately you're watching a, a number five alliance putting up over 200 points, pushing Alliance 1. It took them uh, an event high score in order to pull out the win in this in this match. So lessons learned. I think there are a few of them that we can, we can take away, and I'll just rewind this so we can watch as I'm speaking here, but a few lessons that I've taken away from uh, diving into these three alliances. Triple offense provides a bump in scoring relative to the combined EPA or OPR of the individual robots. So in short, it's greater than the sum of its parts. And that's how you're going to be able to pull upsets in this game. People haven't been able to do that. The It hasn't been unlocked really to this point within Reefscape. But in my mind, triple offense is the key to unlocking that. Um, Triple offense works best when you've got a robot like what we're seeing with 4522 right now, cycling algae, clearing the reef for the other two robots who are cycling coral. Um, really, it's a slow thing, right? right. Keeping, keeping out of each other's way. way. And uh, it, it, it opens the field and really enables you to combat a plus one plus one strategy. If you've got all three offensive robots going to go coral, coral station, that, that can really you know make you susceptible to a defender. Uh, four robots fighting over two coral stations gets really crowded. Uh, finally, triple offense is harder for the top seeds to pull off. Uh, pretty logical reason, right? One and two are going to be elite top tier robots. And then robot number 24, uh, the last pick of the alliance selection, typically is uh, falling off in terms of performance. It, it would be uncommon to get a robot that uh, can keep up with the top two robots that late in the draft. So it's a strategy available to, you know, your five through eight alliances that's really not an option for your top seeds. So what I would say is if I'm a five through eight, I'm trying to build my alliance around uh, doing triple offense so that I can at least give myself a shot to, if I can't win the event, make it to finals to play that number one seed uh, and give them a run for their money. And finally, what I would say is when we're getting later into the season, uh, we've got DCMP coming up for, for every district. We've got the World Championship not that far away, I believe. We're getting getting to the halfway point of the competition season. Um, there are going to be more competent robots available for third-round picks uh, and second-round picks, for that matter. Um, so we're, we're going to see this become more and more viable as the year goes on. So again, I want to shout out the alliances we, we covered here. Uh, Bonnie Lake, number eight, Great Northern, number seven, and Sacramento, number five. Congratulations on pushing the boundary and, and uh, effective strategy in Reefscape. I'm excited to see where triple offense goes from here. And with that, I'm Ryan Swanson. Thank you for watching Funalysis. Uh, always fun to dive into the strategy with Reefscape. And uh, yeah, tune in. I've got a few more of these and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be breaking down some uh, strategies as the season develops. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com contest for further details.
Oshcut is a premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, guaranteed lead times, and instant online quotes. Oshcut is offering first teams 50% off any future order up to $200 when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OSHCUT. Just upload a 3D model or flat pattern to get started. 